Well, welcome to It's Your Money uh, today with John Dietrich, your host, and I'm Gary Bingaman, the co-host of the show, where we help you make more money, save more money, and have more money for all of your financial goals. Thank you. And then we're, what we're going to do right now is we'd like to get someone to play a contest with us or a game. Really simple. Don't get scared. So we'd like you to give us a call. We want you to call us at 862 9977 or 1 800 375 0056. I'll give you the phone number once more 862 9977 or 1 800 375 0056. And you're going to win a one ounce round if you play the game. So it will be a game. So give us a call. And uh, I already know a little bit about the game, not much. But I know that it doesn't take a lot of brain skill to do it. Right, it's not trivia or anything like that. Yeah, so it, it's not going to confuse anyone. It's just, it's just a risk assessment. It's just a risk assessment. <clears throat> All right, we're going to talk about things today. I'm going to talk about one of our sponsors today. She was on last week. Uh, that was Heather Rooney McBride. She's with Rooney McBride and Smith. They're a full-service law office that can help you out with anything from trust to bankruptcy, yeah. they work with home, the, with the uh, people that are, are property management, uh, everything you want, family law, uh, they can hand you with land law. So if you want to, and traffic tickets. So we, Those are important. They are important. Uh, we don't like to get one, but if you have one, you can give her a call. Her phone number is 417-708-9681. Another one of our sponsors is me. I'm Gary Bingham, and I'm with A&D Mechanical, a full-service plumbing, heating, and air company. So, guess what happened this last Friday? Um, well, it wasn't, wasn't the eclipse. No, it wasn't the eclipse. I went out to someone's house. They called, and they said, can you come out? I want you guys to know, never, ever stop second opinions. A poor woman who is a senior... She had a smell in her bathroom. It was a gas odor or a smell of, of sewer gas odor. She had called somebody. She didn't think things were right. They were telling her it was going to be a couple thousand dollars. And they said they had to pull the toilet. They had to pull the sinks and the cabinets. They had to cut up the floor to repair what was wrong. Now, that's we, a major inconvenience. That's so. a, it's not only as, and they told her she couldn't use her bathroom until they got it done. So she called us, someone had given our names, and said, you need to call these guys, have them come out. So we went over, lo and behold, they didn't know all of that. Plumbing 101 says, a odor in the bathroom, you replace the wax ring. That's all it was. Wax ring, 100 bucks, she's done. We talked to her on Monday to make sure it had stopped. Reminded her to call that company that was coming back on Wednesday to, take the, to tear the floor out. Do not come. <laughs> I hope she probably said more than that, because she realized... Things aren't right. But if you're out there, don't worry about second opinions. I don't mind. Do you even mind second opinions if someone comes to see you? Well, no professional is going to mind doing a second opinion to help somebody out and maybe win your business and, you know, maybe at least confirm uh, that, that the person gave you a legitimate quote. Oh, oh, yeah. I never, I never get upset. If you want a second opinion, call someone and find out. If you feel like you've got something that's wrong, then give us a call because we know that... Uh, uh, that we can help you out, we can give you a sec opinion. Our number is 417-866-8257. I think we've got someone that's going to play the game. Yeah. And so, Kip, are you on the line? Okay. Now, we're going to flip a coin, right? You okay. explain the game. All right, Kip. Uh, we'll keep score for you, but you can keep score on your own. Uh, we're going to do a few rounds of a game. And uh, we're going to flip a coin, all right? I've got this, this nice uh, .99 fine silver one ounce coin, and I'm going to flip it, and at the end of the game, you might win the coin, all right? Sound good? So what we're going to do is we're, gonna, we're keeping score, and you can, you can, well, basically you're going to bet every round, and so every round, you're going to guess whether it lands on heads or tails, all right? And if you're right, you get two and a half points. And if you're wrong, you lose a point. Does that make sense? The object of the game 
is to end the game with the most possible points. All right, and you can quit and take your points, freeze your points, and stop rolling anytime you want, but you can't get back in once you stop. Okay, so maximum of 10 rounds, and you're going to be battling A and B plumbing and air, con air conditioning. You'll be battling me today, so we'll see. I will write mine down. You can tell him. He'll write yours down, and he'll flip the coin. Well, how, uh, well you can tell your guesses up front because the coin flip is the random part, right? Right. So round one, round one, and uh, I'll let you wait. Gary, you write down your guess. I did. Okay, he wrote down his guess. What's your guess, Kip? All right, and here's the first flip, and it is, I'm sorry, Kip, it's heads. So Kip is minus, minus one point. How do you feel about that, Kip? <laughs> All right. supposed to be saying, no, you ready, that's ready for round two? I'm going tails this time. You're going tails? Okay. And Kip is going, you're going tails, Kip? All right, here goes. And it is tails. So you're both up plus $2.50. Are you, or not, they're not dollars, they're just points. Are you keeping <laughs> track of Kip's score too? Yeah, Kip, I've got your score over minus here. Minus one. You're minus one and, and two then 2.5. Yes, I've got it. So he's 1.5. Okay. I'll say, so, so yeah, Gary's, one Gary's in the lead, so we'll make him guess the third round first. You want to guess the third round? Yeah, I'm going back to heads. Okay, and Kip? All right, and it has rolled across the room. <laughs> it's tails again. It's tails again. So now we're tied up. Okay, so that, that ties up the game. All right. All right. Thanks for going and retrieving my coin. I'll try to flip <laughs> it more responsibly. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> we'll send it to you. That's what All you right. need. What are we on? Round? We're on round four right round now. Round four. Okay, ready? It's a tie score. Well, uh, okay, and I'm Kip going is, tails again. Kip is going time. heads and Gary is going tails. Here we go. And it's tails. It's tails. Woo! Oh, man, Gary, you're pulling in the lead. Yeah, just slightly. That's okay. That's a minus one. That's I know. I'll give him. <laughs> okay, without further ado, let's go to round six. Gary? Uh, I'm going to stay with tails. Kip? Now remember, you can quit anytime you want. All right, and it's tails. Woo! Well, we're. <laughs> yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a two sided <laughs> coin. The first one, well, the first. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's been heads. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay. Hey, if you go on to our Facebook, we have a live feed, you can actually watch us flip the coin. Yeah, okay. Round, what are we around? Round, round We're six. We're down in round six. Yes. Round six. Okay, Kip, what are you going to do? Okay. And I'll go, I'll go tails this time. And? <laughs> a little bit irresponsible, but we have tails. <laughs> oh, no. My goodness. Round seven. Okay, so so you're ahead. Yeah, yeah I'm ahead uh, five, ten. Now, now here's the big question. Gary, do you want to stop playing and keep your points or risk starting maybe losing? You had a great winning streak going, but the odds are 50-50, so. Yeah, I'll go one more. Maybe I will stop. Okay, all right. And Kip, and uh, you're going to roll one more? You're going to flip one more time here? Okay, you know you're, you know you're. He's got one point. You're, you're positive one right now. <laughs> if you lose, if you lose, you're gonna have negative points. You okay? Well, well, that's why I asked him if he wanted to quit because that would make it really harder for you to win, wouldn't it? Okay, let's go. Okay, you're going heads. Kips heads. What are you doing here? Well, I'm gonna go back to tails. And okay, we got it. We got it. Uh, Difference there, and we have heads. You got heads, yay, yay Kip. There you go. <laughs> yeah. And round eight. Yeah, I think I'm gonna quit. Okay, so Gary's gonna quit because he's uh, he started a losing streak here. 
All right. I you know. And what we, about you, kid? You gonna you gonna go for it here? We we got three flips left. All right. What are you gonna guess? All right. And it's heads. Good guess. Uh oh, he's coming okay. back strong. Flip number nine. Okay. It's heads. Sorry, kid. Mm -hmm. And finally, flip number ten. And it's heads. That was right. terrible. I wish I could have been a, a better host for you there, Kip. But uh, don't, don't 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 go anywhere, Kip. Don't go we anywhere. Still need, you, still need you right here. You're 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 still you're still going to win, Kip. You're so. gonna win, buddy. So don't don't hang up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to do that. All right, I'm going to bring you back with a, one of one of our sponsors, Dr. Michael Miller with Family Back and Neck Care. Uh, phone number is 889-2225. He's down on East Republic Road. Uh, what you need to do is if you need to go see him, give him a call, help him out, and you can take care of it. That's Dr. Michael Miller at Family Back and Neck Care, 417-889-2225. And we'll be back in just a minute. Well, welcome back. You're listening to It's Your Money Radio, where you can make more money, save more money, have more money for all your financial goals. Yeah. Thank you, Gary. All right, Kip, you're still there, right? So, so tell me about your tell me about your coin flipping strategy. Yeah. Right. It's not, is it? But you went from you know you started off and you you vote you went tails and and you lost. And then you went tails and won, and then you went tails and lost, right? And, and then you, you went heads a few times, and we kept getting tails, right? I mean, what was going through your mind? It must have been, must have been awful to keep losing like that. <laughs> All right, well, thanks for playing along, Kim. I've got a uh, Kim. I've got uh, I've got this silver dollar for you, the silver round. It's not a dollar; it's a round. And you're going to you're going to win that. And uh, and uh, if you if you want, we still have a couple of these. Uh, you were made to shine books. They're they're a really great book. Do you have any kids? Six children. So this is a really great book. Um, I read it and and I cried a little bit. I mean, this is from uh, Give a Child a Voice, and it it teaches kids about safe friends and unsafe friends, um, and and when they have to stand their ground and tell people when people behave inappropriately to our children. So it's a great lesson for your kids. So if you want, that sound good? I'll forward one of those for you too. How's that sound? All right, so we have both those prides waiting for you here at the radio station. Is it convenient for you to pick them up? Well, any time in the next couple of weeks, we'll just be sitting here for waiting for you, all right? All right, thanks. Thanks for playing. Thanks a lot, Kip, for playing. I, I know I, I got ahead of you, but I'm glad you won that coin. It is a beautiful coin. Yeah. All right, you do the same. Bye Thank bye you. Kip. And uh, the reason the reason I played this game, you're like, what 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 does this game have to do with anything? In this game, uh, Burton Melchior talks about this game in a book, Random Walk Down Wall Street, and. I had to read this book as part of my uh, MBA program when I was studying finance at Missouri State University, and I loved it. Um, it's a great book. And what Burton Melchior did is he played this game in class, and what he did is say whenever, whenever you won, and he and he had everybody in the class bet heads or tails, and he tally up the result, and he put it on the chart, and he talked to some of these financial advisors who were chartists who believed that charts told a story. And the chartist was like, who is this company? Uh, this is a great company, I wanna invest, that's a perfect looking chart. And it was nothing but a random bunch of coin flips. So charts really don't tell you anything. It really is a 50-50 guess. And then I'm, I'm gonna pick on you, Gary, a little bit, because I really kind of coerced you to quitting and having a competition, and you being so far ahead, it, it kind of, it was part of the strategy. But the right strategy for this game, if you look at the statistical odds of winning, statistically speaking, you should win, and over the long term, 50 cents a flip. 
right? Because right. if you lose, yeah, you're going to lose, lose a dollar or you're yeah. going to win $2.50. Actually, the odds are even better. Yeah, I, it's, it's, it was if you bet a dollar, you lose. So anyway, the statistical odds, which I, I'm not an actuary, but um, really in favor of betting every round and expanding. Your so you should really stay, hang in there and stay with us. Right, right. And that's sort of, uh, that's sort of I like to tell that story and uh, talk about the stock market. And sometimes, you know, people who play the stock market go on losing streaks. And they get depressed and they quit and they never want to do it again. And sometimes they go on winning streaks and they think they're the most brilliant person in the world. But it's really random. But just like the game, over the long run, if you look at the history of the financial markets, whether you're talking the Dow Jones, S&P, NASDAQ, um, all of them over time make money for you. Didn't you say something like 8% you were talking about? Yeah, when the, you average, were a kid? yeah the average. average return of the Dow is 8% a year if you go back over several 20-year periods. It seems to be holding true for, for many, many years. And even after the market crashed in 2009, which was a horrible event, a lot of people never wanted to play the stock market again. But since then, the market's been going up very well most of those years. And, uh, yeah, and over the last 15 years, we still averaged about... So what we should do is there. hang in there is what you're saying. So I'm it's saying not, hang, yeah. yeah, this is a case for long-term investing. Just hang in there. Um, the odds are in your favor, even though it doesn't feel like it sometimes. Oh, yeah, like the years you're talking about. Okay, when so we saw a, everything go down. It's a great book, Random Walk Down Wall Street. And uh, I, I would give one away, but there's a few real interesting stories, and then it gets kind of technical. So I don't think it would make good reading for most people. <laughs> Well, I, I enjoy playing the game, and I think it, it, I can understand the point of it, actually. Because I, 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 I realized I was going to quit, but I could see, because I was winning, it was to do that. I was just lucky, that's luck, but I could see you win 2.5 and you only lose point, minus 1. At a 50-50 odds, you've got to come out ahead in the long run, right? Yeah, but I mean, the point there is if, if, if you and Kip were in a contest... Not, not, not flipping coins, but if you were both working for an advisory company and in charge of your own mutual funds, and we're looking at, even if we were looking at odds of a coin flip, Kip would have been fired because he was losing and you would have been given a bonus. And it's all a random, right. that's your chart. He said, he took the chart and the guy goes, oh, this looks pretty good. So really, you know what I'm saying is sometimes, yeah. sometimes you'll lose money in the markets and sometimes you'll win, but it's not because... Gary's a better market person than Kip. It's just Gary got lucky and Kip got unlucky this read, time around. I read That's something different. once. I, I don't know if it was true. They said they let someone throw darts and then they used someone that was pretty good. And actually, in the long run, it didn't matter too much. Yeah, that's all here in the book. These, these are all things that uh, Bert and Melky will talk about. Is that Bert and Melky? Okay. There's so many great, I mean, if you're in, interested in investing, doing it for yourself or talking about somebody even if you're having somebody else manage your money, if you really want to understand investing, that's the one book I recommend you read. Well, I'm going to have to take a look at that. Hey, we want to talk about one of our sponsors. It's Marilee Darty. She's with Clarity Insurance and Financial Services. Her phone number is 417-887-6261. She specializes in home and auto insurance. So if you need home and auto insurance, we got one that can help you with tickets and one that can help you with insurance. And to do that, uh, uh, she can save you money. She saved uh, some money here with John, and she can save you money too. So if you need insurance needs, go ahead and give Marilee at Clarity Insurance a call. We'll be right back in just a moment. Welcome back. You're listening to It's Your Money Radio. And we're going to show you how to make more money, to save more money, to have more money for all of your financial goals. Let's go back over to you, John, and let's find out a little bit about your story, too. Well, um, I wanted to finish talking about this, uh, this whole stock market thing, because mm -hmm. I just said something that might lead you to believe that financial advisors, maybe, maybe you don't need them. But uh, here's the thing. If all, if all of you are thinking about doing is, is putting money in the stock market, and picking individual companies trying to pick losers and winners, you're not going to be better or worse than a professional at that. But that's not what we do, because there's ways to improve on those results. 
and we do that, um, the, the common, the most acceptable way in the industry to help you improve your results is diversification. It's the modern portfolio theory of investing. So that means you have a lot spread out over a certain... Right. And so knowing how to do that and still manage your money and be able to make, make more money for you. That's what this is about. So how do we take something that's as simple as picking stocks, winning or losing, we try to minimize your risk, maximize your return. I mean, we, you know, we use strategies to help do that. We can't guarantee it, but it's proven that the strategies we use are better than the average stock picker. So it's not about picking and choosing the stocks. It's about, it's about what we do in addition to that. So is that kind of age dependent? Let's say that I was looking, you can find stocks that are maybe, I, I hate to use the word safer, I realize there's no guarantees, but something that's got a proven track record that maybe hasn't had a lot of losses doesn't return as much versus something that's pretty volatile or goes up and down. Well, right, and there are different classes and categories of uh, investments. So I don't, I don't like you know, talking about the stock market, but I talk about investing. And there's different ways to invest. So, I, in, in fact, I had a client, uh, a, a, a prospect, you know, hopefully mm -hmm. a client. They said they, they were filling out the information, getting back to me. Come, they were coming in this week. And we were talking, and he, he just basically came in because he's, he was a little frustrated about the returns he was getting. And he was invested in CDs, certificates of deposit at his bank. And, you know, certificate of what's a, what's a, I mean, you don't want to go, when the interest rates are this low, you don't want to commit to a 20, 30 year CD because interest rates eventually are going to go back up. I think most people believe that. So um, he's looking at these one or two year investments in CDs and he can't even make 2%. No, I've seen the, the banks, at least what they show when their signs outside. Right. And, and if inflation is 3.5%, you're, you're going down every day. You're losing money all the time, right? So, yeah. so one of the things people are having a hard time doing is keeping up. Number one, you have to keep up with inflation. You know, If you can't make enough money to at least keep up with inflation, you're losing money. Okay, and then so, you'd like to make some on top of that. Right, so how do you do that if you're afraid of investing? And so I sat down with this guy, and I explained, okay, first, let's talk about some of the safer types of investing. And there's a type of investing, say, let's look at, let's look at what your bank does. You think your bank is being safe? Let's look at what your banker's doing. Okay, your banker takes your money, pays you 1.5%, lends it to Gary, charges him 6.5%, right? Right. And keeps 5%. Wow, never thought of it that way, but that's exactly how that's it goes. That's what they do, and that's why they can afford to, you know, be building banks on every corner in Springfield, because there are a lot of money who are, a lot of people who are risk averse, and they're basically giving bankers money to build buildings on every street corner. So if you town. take a small amount, they're going to make more money definitely than... Right, so let's flip get, that. Let's flip right. that. There are plenty of companies out there. They're called, uh, well, they're called senior notes. So I can find not just, you know, um, unfortunately, maybe, you know, I, and I got to say one of the good things bankers do is they keep your money in the community. So that's, that's good. But on the other hand, I'm looking at publicly traded companies. I'm looking at large Fortune 500 companies that are looking for short-term money. So they're willing to um, borrow from, from you, from everybody out there. And they're paying, you know, anywhere around, around, around let's say, 6%. I can definitely find some that are lower and some that are higher than 6% on a, on a two-year investment. So what I'm doing is I'm flipping it around. I'm saying, I'll tell you what, I'll help you find these invest investments. And it wasn't a lot of money and, and he didn't want to get into stocks at all. So for this client, and for everybody it's different, but for this client, uh, it made sense to take his money uh, and buy a few different of these notes from different companies so that we would take his money invest it with these companies. They would pay 6%, I'll keep 1.5%, and give him 5 
So really everyone wins in that scenario. Yeah, that's He's a, beating inflation, he's making some money, right. and you're, you're going to make some money for helping him direct. Yeah, so now he's the banker and he likes that. I'm, I'm helping him find places to invest his money. But it's a, <coughs> you know, it's a strategy, and again, you know, to lower the risk of one of these companies not paying back. And these are all investments that are secured by the full faith of the company that, you know, Fortune 500, you, huge multi-million dollar companies, and, um, you know, sure companies fail once in a while, so you want to diversify, you want to buy as many of these as you can. You want to buy as many of these as you can, these investments, and uh, so that's that works for some people who don't want to take a lot of risk but are tired of, of not making a lot of money on their money. Okay. And I can understand, I mean, I'm like you, and, and I'm not like you. You've done a lot of research and a lot of study. I'm just one of those guys. I've worked a long time. I have some money, but all my money's tied up where other people seem to be making money on my money. You're helping build banks. I, I'm helping build, well, banks, and without using anyone, institutions that sell you yeah. uh, uh, money markets and those type of things. My wife hates it. She gets her statement from one of them. She looks at it and she throws her hands up and says, I'm really not making anything. I'm not doing anything. Mm -hmm. And of course, she keeps her eyes on the, on the stock market. I mean, we don't sit in front of the TV, but every night, that you know, it comes up for a few minutes. You read about banner years and we just haven't seen the banner years. So that's why I, I'm really interested in this and I want to I want to see what you can do for us. I. You know, you say senior notes, I'm a senior note. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, like I said, that was one investment strategy. It, it met the needs of this one person, and it may not need, meet everybody's needs. But oh, I understand that's that. my job is to sit down with a client. Let's look at what you're currently doing and assess your level of satisfaction or dissatisfaction. Uh, I'm obviously, you're, if you're thrilled with the way it's going, you're not going to want to talk to me. But if you feel like maybe you could do better, and especially after listening to the program, I'm trying to give people uh, tips on what are some of the things you should be looking for and uh, what you could be doing better. And then you might want to come to me and, and say, well, John, you know, I've heard you talking on the radio. Um, I'm really not completely satisfied or I have a question about this investment. I'll help you out. And, uh, you know, first, you know, just give me a call. Um, I'm how not going to charge you to I was just going to ask, how much does it charge the first time to come in and see you? Yeah, I mean, the first time, we're, I just want to meet you, um, see what I can do. Really, it's about, can I help you? How can I help you? Do you want me to help you? You know, that sort of thing. Um, just the, the very beginning, maybe do a, if, if you want to move further, we have a client questionnaire to fill out where I can get to know more information about you and then move forward from there, developing your personal financial plan. This just brought me to a question, John. Here's a bunch of people out here listening to the radio, and there may be some that are in their 20s. What where do you recommend someone to start? Well, um, I can only tell you about my, my wonderful son. <laughs> oh, yeah. He started when he was just a little baby. And, uh, you know, you don't start by putting your money in the stock market. Okay, so you save. The first thing you do is save. Okay. I don't want somebody coming to me, you know, who is, you know, who has, who has bills and debt and all kinds of problems. Now, you can come to me and I will give you advice, but I am not going to recommend that you take all of your money and put it in the stock market, right? Because right. what if you need a new car or your car breaks down and you need a $4,000 repair? You're going to call me up and say, I need $4,000? That's not how it works. See, you have short-term money in, in the bank. That's fine because you have immediate access. You can write a check. Heck, you might even have some money at home in case something breaks down on the weekend and you can't get to the bank and you need to pay a, a plumber oh, yeah. uh, for emergencies. So those sort of things you need to have money for. So the point is if you're investing, it's just like a coin toss. If, if you were going to bet on one flip, heads or tails, 50-50, isn't very good odds. No, I agree with you. So. Right, so I, I wouldn't ask you to bet that, to play that game for one round with, for $100, even if I was willing to pay you 250 if you want, because you're gonna walk away 50-50 chance losing all of your money. 
And that's a bad bet. So the idea is we have to look at long-term solutions for your money. And uh, that's money that you're not going to touch for so, so you would say if, if, if I had someone I knew that was 21 or 22 years old, they could come in and talk to you, and if they don't have that foresight of your son's strategy of saving, you could kind of give them some goals to work towards before they can invest, right? Right. So where are you now is where it all starts. We assess their current financial condition, and sure, some 20-something-year-olds are ready to invest, but some of them aren't. So okay. let's say if you're ready to invest, I'm ready to help you. And if you're not ready to invest, I'm ready to help you get through the steps to get you ready to invest. That's what I was asking. You'll help them right. prepare for when they do have it. Yeah, so the first the first step is saving when you feel like you have enough money saved for your for your immediate needs, um, for your you know, four or six month needs, and you have extra money to set aside that you're ready to invest for the long term. Let's talk about IRAs or different ways you can do that. Okay, and does it matter how old you are? Well, um, you have to be 21 to have an account of your own, uh -huh. but you can have a custodian account. I set up a custodian account. Oh, man, I my, son's, my son's one of the best, uh, what a, I should say, luckiest investors I know because he's so tech, he's in all this technology and he put all his money in technology companies and, you know, he knows it's risky, but he's, you know, he's young, so he doesn't mind if he loses a little bit. And he's basically doubled his money, so he's done, he's done really well in the stock market. But uh, there's a lot of stocks out there that are going up really, really quickly. But those aren't good. You know, if you look at the long term, they're not going to go up forever at that rate. So you have to look at a mix. Didn't we have a few busts along the way, even with the the, the mar or IT market and yeah, and sure. There's sure. other things. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, there's always you always have to be diligent. I'm not a spring chicken, but I and I've seen a yeah. few ups and downs and. I've watched my money that I've got secured through stocks and bonds fluctuate, so, you know, to do that. Well, I wanted to tell a, tell a story today, um, how I got kind of started in, after a while, when I got started in the financial field. And I got started, but what's more important is, is why I feel the way I feel about investing. Why I want to do a radio show and help as many people as I can. And I got to tell you, my first client ever, and this was the first company I worked for, where where back then we were knocking on your doors, knock, 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 um, what, you know, and, and introducing ourselves. I'm your neighborhood financial advisor. Um, here are five things you need to look out for. Which one's more important to you? Can I call you and recommend investments? Okay? That was a shortened version of our door to door speech that we practiced <laughs> day and night. And, uh, well, I was, I was walking through a neighborhood and I, and I, and I saw this. It's nice when people are outside because then they're easier to approach. They can't just ignore you. And there's this nice uh, woman. She was teaching her granddaughter how to ride her bicycle. And I thought, oh, how nice. And I talked to her, and she's like, wow, I'm so glad I found you. I'm like, what's going on? And this was, this was back about 10 years ago. And so she says, well, I've been looking at the news, and there's this guy made off, and he's losing all this money. For all these people and I'm just really nervous about my investments could you take a look and I took a look and as unlikely as it seems she wasn't with Madoff she is with investing um, with a with a company a guy by the name of Alan Stanford so it was exactly the same problem this guy started the banking system in, in, in a little island of Antigua and he was selling certificates of deposit that were paying 10% interest now, everybody's like certificate of, I mean, at the time, certificates of deposit, CDs at the bank mm -hmm. were paying 4 or 5% interest. Okay. And uh, so for, for about 20 years, this lady had been investing into these CDs and taking the interest payments out and living off of them and very happy to put all our money in one place because it was such a great investment. And she thought CDs are government backed. Well, they are in the United States, but they're not in Antigua, Antigua okay. and nobody ever told her that. And this guy, Alan Stanford, if you want to look him up on the internet, turned out to be a complete con man. He never invested any of your money. He built his own private airport. He owned half the island of Antigua. He bought his private jets. He flew around. He was a, he was a, a playboy, and he lost everybody's money, and so... So then you end up with a worthless piece of paper. So, right. 
I, I mean, fortunately and unfortunately, I got her out of that investment. Unfortunately, I didn't get it out early enough because I got her out. Now, that's good. Yes. Because it was a large sum of money, mm -hmm. and I've been able to invest that money for her over the last nine years. She's been able to keep getting her monthly living allowance out of that money, and her money has grown. Okay? Now, that's good. On the bad side, if she had left it in, every two weeks after she moved her money, literally two weeks after she moved her money, they froze the assets in that investment so nobody could get their money out. So she would have just been without her money. Her life savings of hundreds of thousands of dollars would have been gone forever. Nobody has gotten their money out who that happened to so far, except for a few people. Now there's lawsuits going on and all that. But she thanks God for me every day because I saved her from being locked up. Now, on the other hand, there still are lawsuits, and we're dealing with that, and I'm helping her with all that because uh, the, there's a turk government yeah. attorneys involved, and they're trying to get a fair settlement, including getting back some of the money from people they think maybe had inside information. and That it was going to fall into the thing. Yeah, well, she didn't have any inside information, but uh, so that, that was a, but for people like that, that's why I'm still in the investment world. Okay, that is, a, that's great. It gives us an insight to who you are, and I, I'll be honest, folks, I don't, uh, I don't align up with people that I don't think are honest and straight shooters. That's because my company, I believe in honesty, straight shooting, and I think that's what we need. Another company we can talk about for just a few minutes is Scrivener Solutions. Uh, as we say, winding down our hour here, uh, this is Gayla Scrivener. She's a virtual assistant. If you don't know what a virtual assistant is, do you ever use a virtual assistant, John? Well, yeah, I use uh, Scrivener Solutions. Yeah, you use Scrivener. I do, too. I had to laugh. I, I really, John and I met long after. I've been using Gala for the last six years. Uh, I won't say that she's the sole reason that our company's done really well. She's an integral part. I could shoot things off of her. She would help me do it. I've got some programs that she's helped me write. Uh, I mean, I don't mean the programs. We've sent them off to our legal team, and she's been a big thing with that. So we really want to talk to her about her. Uh, she works on the show, and she has not only herself, but doesn't she have other professionals uh, that work with her? Well, yeah, she has a team of professionals, and so they can help you with all different types of solutions from uh, payroll bookkeeping. Your, their, she works on my Facebook Live, Facebook site, and we're, work, we're going to be working on a website and other investments or other, other jobs like that in the future. <laughs> Sorry, my mind's on investments. You know, I know, I know. You, you, you have a great story. It's really mm -hmm. wonderful to hear how that woman was helped. So, you guys ought to give John a call, talk to him. Yeah, we have uh, these things. And you it's, can download a book from uh, Gayla Scrivener. Yeah, she's got that book that tells you about five things you must know before you hire a virtual assistant. If you go to our Facebook page and you look at our Facebook post, I love to claim they're all mine. Some are ours. But Gayla's team helps me. She helps us with, you know, uh, this new social media. I'm an old guy. It, it seems like every time we hear social media, and for us, social media may have been the radio or social media. You know what I'm saying? We got together but, to do that. Or, yeah, as he was saying, yeah, you make a phone call. I don't know who does that anymore. I, I talk to people, and I haven't ever talked. I haven't talked to them in years, and they, all I ever get is a text. I forget who they are sometimes. <laughs> so, uh, well, and what the, we have in common is we're both small businesses. Um, it's you know I work at Douglas Bagwell and Company, but really for myself. And you work for yourself, and yes. especially if you're a small business person, you get things that you have to get done that you don't have time to do. What I love about Gayla and her team is that they don't need a lot of constant supervision. They're very smart. She's a great manager. She'll take a project. She'll run with it. She'll get it done, and you'll be happy with it. No, I think that's the best thing we've got. That uh, 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 who we got coming next week? I think uh, next week we've got uh, Marley Dar Darby, Dardry. Yeah, Marley from Marley Lee Dardry. I wrote it and I wrote it phonetically, and then I didn't when I wrote the last thing. So, yeah, she's with Clarity Insurance and Financial Services. She'll be next week. Remember that she's going to be normally the third week of the month, right? Mm -hmm. 
And normally, guys, if you're listening for Dr. Mike Miller, you're going to find him when? On the second week of the month. Which is this week, but he had he had to step out of the show at the last minute, so I apologize. We were advertising. I know people were looking forward to seeing Dr. Mike or hearing him on the, on the air today, but uh, he'll be here at the, the last week of the month. Okay, sounds really good. And then, like I said, next week we'll be talking about, so already start preparing yourself. What insurance questions do I need? What can I ask? What do I need? I'm going to tell you what, some people complain about insurance and they don't like their insurance person. I love my insurance person. It allows me to go home and go to bed at night and to sleep because I've got my company covered. I've got my general liabilities covered. I keep insurance on my vehicles. And then my own personal insurance. I think insurance people uh, deserve that. We'd like to thank some of our other uh, sponsors today. Uh, we appreciate Kip, you giving us a phone call. And uh, you guys, every week, if you'd like to give us a call, let us know how things are going. And if you just want to comment on the show, uh, each person that comes in will carry a new expertise. Uh, they'll tell you something about how to save your money. You got anything else on saving money? I cut a little short. I'm sorry. I saw that. Well, and if, if, you, if you would like to be a guest on It's Your Money Radio, uh, give me a call. Uh, John Dietrich at It's Your Money. Uh, the number for uh, 417 My Money is 986 4496. That's Eric Cliff 417. 417. And guys, if you want to see any of our past shows, go to the Facebook, look on our Facebook, It's Your Money. Uh, and when you find it there, we have each week's shows. That's something that Gala does for us. Mm -hmm. And she'll take those shows and she'll put them on. So you can always go there. But if you've got any questions, give us a holler. We'd like to thank our sponsors. We've got Rooney, McBride, and Smith. They're the first weeks of the month. They'll be bringing on different legal professionals. They can handle all your legal needs. You've got Dr. Michael Miller, who would normally be the second weekend of the month, or the second week of the month. And he'll come on, and he's been talking about ketones. And uh, then we've got uh, um, the Clarity Insurance. Uh, they're your insurance and financial services. They will actually be on the third week of the month. Um, on Friday, uh, we're going to have, of course, uh, uh, each week, Gala Scribner. She's usually be on that way. And maybe one day we'll hear from her. A&D Mechanical, you guys have the wonderful pleasure of listening to me uh, every week. I really enjoy the show to do that. And then, of course, John, we want to say thanks. You have put together a wonderful show and to do that. So, guys, uh, keep it in your mind. Tell someone else this week, hey, you need to listen to It's Your Money. Uh, remember, It's Your Money, uh, where we want to help you on It's Your Money Radio to make more money, to save more money, to have more money for all of your financial goals. You got a last thought for us? Well, yeah, and uh, when it comes time to choose a financial advisor, I know there are a lot of choices out there, but it really boils down to uh, three ways that you can pay a financial advisor. You can pay them all a commission only. You can have a fee-based advisor and pay a fee for personal financial planning, plus they'll earn a commission on everything they sell. Or you can earn a fee, you have a fee-only advisor that only makes uh, only charges a fee and never makes any money from commissions or kickbacks of any kind whatsoever. The third kind is a fiduciary financial advisor and that's what I do at Douglas Badwell and Company. I'm a, I'm a fiduciary financial advisor that is only motivated by to help people to make more money, save more money, and have more money for their financial goals. I'd like to do a personal financial plan for you uh, any, any, if you want me to look at your investments, my work number at Douglas Babwell Advisors is 417-763-3345. So make an appointment with me, have me look over your investments, and I'll give you good advice. Give me a call. My direct line at Douglas Babwell Advisors is 417-763-3345, or call the show anytime at 862-9977, and we'll answer your questions.